Today we're looking at the artist Vincent Van Gogh. Vince Van Gogh is one of my favorite artists. I really enjoy looking at his art and reading about him and his life and learning more and more about his paintings. My favorite book to read when learning about Vincent Van Gogh is Camille and the Sunflowers. This is a really lovely story of when Vincent Van Gogh moved to a little town and he became friends with Camille. So here's a little bit about the story. It says, one day a strange man arrived in Camille's town. He had a straw hat and a yellow beard. The strange man is the artist Vincent Van Gogh, seen through the eyes of a young boy, entranced by Vincent's paintings as Camille discovers not everyone appreciates the genius of his sunflower man. Vincent is forced to leave the town, but his paintings live on, never to be forgotten. An enchanting introduction to the great painter with reproductions of Van Gogh's own work. I highly recommend this story um, when learning about Vincent Van Gogh. Another one that I would recommend is in this pack called Mini Masters. As you can see, it has a book about Degas, Van Gogh, Matisse, and Monet. The one about Van Gogh is perfect for our lesson today because look at right on the cover, there's a vase of sunflowers. And what we're discussing is still life artworks. So here's an example of a still life artwork. In the story, you get to see a lot of different paintings, not just the sunflowers. Very beautiful pages in this book. There you see, that is a really nice one for learning about Vincent Van Gogh as well. So here is the main focus of our lesson today. Uh, we're talking about three different types of artworks. So here you see a still life, a landscape, and a self-portrait. Now these are really, really good examples of this because it clearly shows the differences between them. Where you can see a still life could be a vase of flowers, it could be a bowl of fruit. It could be something that is sitting very still for the artist to sit down for a while and paint that object. A landscape, you can see there's land, there's trees, there's buildings, and there's a sky. A self-portrait is when you paint a picture of yourself or you draw a picture of yourself. So here's Vincent van Gogh's self-portrait. Some of the most common things you'll see in still life artworks are flowers and fruit, but you could also see other things like books, candles, teapots, or other things you could find lying around in your house. So a still life is a really good art project that you could do right at home. You could find a stuffed animal, you could find a toy, and you could try to draw or paint that toy. Now here's a little quiz for you. Is this a painting of a still life? What do you think? A good way to practice figuring out what an artwork is, is describing it. Here we're looking at a plate of lemons. I would say yes, thumbs up. That is a still life artwork. Is this a still life artwork? It's a painting of some boots and there's nobody wearing them. They're sitting really still. I would say, yes, that's a still life artwork. Now here is a painting of a field and there's crows flying. There's a night sky. Is this a still life artwork? I would say, no, this is not a still life artwork. It's still a really, really nice artwork though. Now here is the vase of sunflowers. This is the main painting that we're looking at today. Is this a still life artwork? Yes, that is a still life artwork. Here's what we're gonna be doing today. We are going to draw a sunflower using a permanent marker. Then we're gonna take our watercolor paint set 
and we're going to use our little dish of water and a paintbrush and we're going to paint our sunflower. So we're going to turn this white watercolor piece of paper into a beautiful painting of a sunflower. Now my only rule when we are doing art is that mistakes are okay. If you look at my painting, you can see that there were a couple of mistakes. My watercolor paint decided to go into my flower petals and mix up a little bit. See how my yellow got out of my flower petal? That is okay. My circle is not perfect. It's not a perfect circle. If you look over here, you can see, oh, what happened? I think a little bug came and took a bite out of my flower. So anytime you make a mistake in your artwork, it could have a fun little story to go along with it. Now let's get started. Okay, let's begin. Take out your permanent marker. Take the cap off. Stick it onto the back just like that so we don't lose the cap. We don't want it rolling around our workplace. Okay, let's start with a circle. Your circle does not have to be perfect. Mine's a little bit wibble wobbly and that is okay. Now, inside the circle, we are going to draw the sunflower seeds and they don't have to be perfect either. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do them in all different sizes. So take a look. I'm doing some small, some large, and some medium. I'm connecting them just like that. We're gonna do this until the center is full of our little sunflower seeds. Remember to switch up your sizes. Sometimes I get a little carried away and I start making them all the same size, but let's make them all a little different. There. Once your circle is completely filled with your sunflower seeds, then we're going to start working on our flower petals. Now you can decide how big you're going to draw your sunflower. I'm going to draw mine pretty big. That means that my flower petals might go to the edge of my paper. So at this time, if you are drawing on a surface uh, that you don't want to get permanent marker on, maybe find another piece of paper or something to set underneath your paper so you don't get any permanent marker marks on your table. Here we go. We're gonna start with our first flower petal. A nice curved line. I'm going all the way to the edge of my paper. I was careful to move slow so I didn't get it on my table. Then we're gonna draw the second line for this flower petal. We're just gonna have this be a regular flower petal. No little bugs have come and take a bite out of this one yet. Now let's work on our next one. I'm gonna do another curved line, but I'm gonna kind of curve it again. Oh, here, see how I curved and then I had it curl right here? That's gonna be a really interesting looking flower petal. Now, if I'm moving too fast, make sure you stop the video and you pause so that you can think and take your time. There, that flower petal is done now too. Now let's do another one. Another kind of curvy one. There, that was a big flower petal. See how it didn't even come to a point right here? 
You don't have to squeeze your picture to fit your paper. You can have it look like that flower petal would continue out here. Okay, I'm gonna keep going now. Ooh, now this one, I'm gonna make it look like a bug came and took a little bite out of it. So when I'm drawing it, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna act like, whoa, a bug got hungry and took a little bite right there. Okay, keep going around your circle, drawing your flower petals, remembering that mistakes are okay. Once you've gone around your circle all the way, now we have to do our second set of flower petals. So look right here in between each of these flower petals, we're going to add another one. Let's start. You can make them by doing little mountains like this. You could have them be kind of curly. You can have them be pointy. You decide how to do these ones. Mm, that one kind of looked like a moon. Okay, once you've gone all the way around and you've added a flower petal in between each one, now we're going to draw our stem. You could have your stem going in any direction down below. I'm gonna have mine go right here. Two lines going from the flower down to the bottom of your paper. Then let's add some leaves. Kind of just a line that's a little bit curvy. We're gonna come to a point right here. And let's go back down. You can add extra details in your leaf too. Maybe there's a vein in the leaf with some extra lines. Maybe there's another little leaf over here. Add your extra details. Okay, now we are ready to paint. Take your marker, put your cap back on so that your marker doesn't dry out. If you leave the cap off, air is going to hit the tip of it and then your marker is not going to work very well anymore. So let's make sure we put the cap on. Okay. Now we are going to take our paintbrush, get it nice and wet. And you could choose your own colors. You don't have to do the exact same colors as me, but I'm going to paint the center of my flower brown. So you saw how I got my paintbrush wet and then I dipped into my brown paint. When using watercolors, you have to make sure that your paintbrush is wet. And make sure you do it in the right order so you go from the water to the paint, not from the paint to the water. If you do from the paint to the water, you're going to waste a lot of your paint. I'm mm, gonna add a little bit more brown to it. There. Okay, I'm all done with my brown color. So that means I have to rinse my paintbrush. So I do a gentle swirl in my water and I kind of push down into the bottom of my dish to get all of that brown paint out. Now, when we're looking at the sunflowers, I'm seeing a lot of yellows and oranges really really pretty colors so i'm gonna do some orange around the center i'm gonna do little strokes like this all the way around mm, my paintbrush is getting a little dry so I'm gonna dip into my water and then into my paint again. Mm, 
Wow, this orange is looking really nice. I went all the way around the center of my flower. Now I'm rinsing my orange out of my paintbrush because I'm going to dip into the yellow and I'm gonna paint the rest of my flower petals yellow. A nice sunshine yellow, like the sun. So relaxing to paint. Remember to dip into your water if your paintbrush feels like it's getting a little bit dry. Ooh, my orange got a little bit into my yellow on this one. That's kind of pretty. There, all done with the yellow. If you need more time, make sure you pause and finish up all of your yellow parts before you move on to the next step. Now I'm going to rinse all of the yellow out of my paintbrush. Next, I'm gonna dip into the green and we're going to paint our stem. Okay, all done with green. Now I'm going to rinse my paintbrush. Now you get to choose the color for your background. Okay, the background is the space around your flower. This is the foreground where your flower is. And then the background is all this extra white space that we have. Behind these sunflowers, we can kind of see a bluish green color, like a really light blue. So the wall behind the sunflowers must be kind of a light blue color. I'm gonna paint the background of mine blue also, but you get to choose, you don't have to do blue. So if you wanna do purple, you could do purple. If you wanna make it orange or red, you can choose to do that. Okay, time to paint our background. Now when your color gets a little bit into your flower petal, that's okay. Watercolors can kind of have a mind of their own and they can spread out and sometimes they do things that are unexpected. So if a little mistake happens like that, don't even worry about it.
all done. I sure hope that you like your beautiful painting of your sunflower. I sure had fun painting mine. See you next time.